This production has been brought to you by the Fresno Mycology Society. In our last video, we walked through the process of building a mushroom fruiting chamber. We discussed how to set up and control the lighting, air circulation, and the humidity. A link to that tutorial is provided in the description below. The only major parameter we did not discuss controlling was the temperature, such as the topic of this video. Now being that our fruiting room was designed and built to operate within a house, it generally stays the exact same temperature of the house itself. For me, in the hot summer months of the year, that's around 78 to 80 degrees during the day and 75 at night. In the winter, those numbers drop by about 5 to 10 degrees. While this temperature range is okay for many mushrooms, the optimal range for many species of oysters is closer to 60 to 68 degrees. And king oysters, being the most cold-loving of the oysters, enjoy temperatures between 45 and 55 degrees. Lion's mane prefers a range between 50 to 65 degrees, and so on and so forth. The clear trend being that many mushrooms would rather I turn down my AC. But since I live under the reign of PG&E in a scorching hellscape, and would rather not pay a thousand dollar electrical bill, I decided to put my noggin to work, designing a cheap DIY AC unit for my mush mansion. The things I do for these guys. Join me as I walk you through the solution I arrived at. To build this yourself, you can select one of the many 120mm PC radiators that the internet has to offer. I'm not going to pretend to be an expert on tiny radiators, so use your best judgment. My only recommendation is to buy one that uses aluminum and copper tubing to avoid rusting. Also, make sure you pair like metals where they meet. If the port threads are brass, definitely do not use an aluminum compressor fitting as these two metals undergo electrolysis when near one another. As with my humidifier tote, I bolted on House of Hydro's 120 millimeter waterproof fans to the radiator. Now, in order to cool the air blown through this radiator, a circulating coolant is necessary, which brings us to the second part of this system. To store the coolant and keep it as cold as possible for as long as possible within a small budget, I'm using one of these 5 gallon igloo coolers. To circulate the coolant, I'm using this little DC water circulation pump, which I've glued to the inside wall of the cooler. To connect the pump to the radiator, I drilled three holes in the lid of the cooler through these conveniently pre-existing divots. One for the pump cord and two for the silicone connection tubes. This may seem obvious, but one of the tubes goes from the pump to the radiator inlet and the other goes from the radiator outlet to the cooler and dumps the coolant back into the reservoir. When selecting your pump, I would recommend getting a self-priming model. This pump is not, so I had to find a workaround for the fact that every time the unit switched off, the coolant would drain from the tubes and pump, and when switched back on, the coolant wouldn't recirculate. The solution I came up with was to add a cheap plastic one-way valve in line with the outlet tube of the pump. That way, when the pump shut off, the water level in both the inlet and the outlet tubes stayed still and wouldn't backflow. Now you probably thought because I've been saying coolant this whole time that there's some interesting chemical involved, but there's not. It's just water. Though it is distilled water. That's exciting, right? And for good reason. When I first got this system going, I was just using tap water and ice made from said tap water. But as you can see here, the minerals in our water precipitate out when frozen and melted. This resulted in more and more mineral gunk accumulating in the water with each ice dump. So, to avoid clogging up the tiny tubes of the radiator with mineral crud, I opted to fill the reservoir with distilled water. And to avoid the introduction of mineral scum via the ice, I bought four of these large ice packs. Two I leave in the reservoir, while two more refreeze. As mentioned in the fruiting chamber video, I control both the temperature and humidity with this controller, the Inkbird ITC608T. Simply put, I set the controller to turn on the radiator fan and the pump when the temperature gets above 65 degrees and kicks off when it gets to 62 degrees. I used to rely on this controller alone to let me know when the water in the reservoir got too warm and thus the radiator. But by the time the temperature of the room got above a certain alarm value, 
It would take a literal hot minute before a new ice pack would sufficiently cool down the water to drop the temperature back down. For this reason, I dropped this McKesson refrigerator thermometer that I just happen to have laying around into the bucket. This meter also has programmable high and low temperature alarms, so I know well in advance when the ice packs are starting to lose their cool. Well, that's it for this build. I hope you enjoyed it and got some ideas. I would love to see what methods you end up using to cool your tent. Thanks for joining me. If you found this video useful, give it a like and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. If you'd like to help us make more videos like this, you can become a patron on Patreon. Thanks again for your time. Happy hunting.